Hi, my name is John. I'm a program manager on the Teams Toolkit team. And I have a couple slides to share with you, just give you a little bit of an overview of the way that we look at building apps for the Teams platform. And then I'm just going to jump right in and just give an overview of the Teams Toolkit and where we're at today and uh, show you some of the features we have in the VS Code extension. And then I'll uh, tell you a little bit about what we're doing next. And I think then we'll wrap up with that. So just real quick, I have a, um, this slide here with the Teams platform. This is a little overview, and I think it might even be a little outdated now because there's probably a couple more bullet points we could add on here these days. So I'll need to update that. But um, just want to give an idea of if you're new to the platform um, or if you're not, a lot of this will be familiar to you. But this is kind of what we look at is how, you know, if I'm getting started, what does it mean to extend Teams? What does it mean to build an app for Teams? What can I even do? And this is a really common question we get as people are coming into the platform or getting started with building for teams. And um, I find it helpful to look at something like this and see you know, the categories of how we break it down on the left here with the capabilities, um, the UI constructs, and how you can uh, kind of start with an entry point um, into that uh, space. And there's a lot of terminology here. Um, so there's a lot of things to search and learn about, and that all can be pretty overwhelming. So the way we were looking at it with, with Teams Toolkit is we're really just trying to ask one question like what are you trying to do in teams what are you trying to do and we're focused on the outcome of what you're trying to build and then as you go across that journey you start to pick up some of that terminology and figure out like okay what am i trying to do i want to i want to show you know my web app inside of uh teams in this area that i'm familiar with what's that called and maybe you learn that that's a tab and that helps you kind of progress through the journey or hey i really want to do some type of chat um, type inter interface. Uh, maybe that's a bot. I've heard that before, or something like that. Um, we want to try to like introduce these topics, kind of an incremental way, and an outlook of you know the way we think about that is we really want it to be simple to build for Teams and Office and Outlook, um, and also use the tools that you know and you love. And so these are kind of the the six ways that I've kind of broken it down. Is we want to make it simple to uh, everywhere, everything from learning to creating, setup, changing it, testing it. And then if you need it, scaling it. And so that's why we've kind of created the Teams Toolkit to try and solve these kind of six buckets. And so with the learn part, we have samples. Um, we have our own documentation right now. We have tutorials that are specifically around the Teams Toolkit and how it can help you solve specific scenarios that we focused on. Um, it helps you create projects with uh, templates that are help jumpstart those. Uh, scenarios, which I'll show you in a minute, and then uh, helps you build them. Um, so it sets up, you know, a bit of a development environment for you. It can help you with things like tunneling, so you can debug these applications since everything's hosted remote when you're working with Teams. And then also, uh, you know, testing. And if you need it, you can also adopt our provisioning and deployment kind of uh, pieces of toolkit. And what that really is is we, by default, we give you a, a kind of our opinion on a good way to get started to scale this with Azure. Um, and then you can also use Toolkit to publish directly to Teams. So if you want to take this, uh, your project, and put it in your tenant, then you also have kind of a one-click way to do that as well. More practically, um, another way to think about the Toolkit is what does it include? Like, what am I actually uh, looking at here? And I think one way that helps me is to think about it like this, like what are the practical things I'm going to be using? And so we have these four things. Um, the toolkit provides a CLI tool and the VS Code and VS extensions build on top of the CLI to give you um, a little bit more of UI and UX and the tools that you might be familiar with. And then we also have an SDK that provides uh, some abstractions and some simplifications for things like single sign-on, um, for things like creating certain types of bots that help you achieve a certain scenario, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and these are kind of the four things that the toolkit uh, provides right now. So I'm just going to stop sharing this and jump over to VS Code. So hopefully you can see that. And I'm going to start with just how do you even get Teams Toolkit? If you're working in VS Code, and that's what I'm going to show today. Today I'm going to just take a, a tour of the VS Code extension. Uh, you just go to the marketplace, search it like I did here, and install it. So it's just like any other VS Code extension. Once you install it, you'll get a tab over here on the left-hand side. And this is your kind of UI for how to enter the toolkit and get started. Um, you have a couple different options here. And the one I'm going to show you here is 
uh, we can basically have an entry point to create a new app. And we can choose to either uh, start uh, from some templates or we can start from some samples. The sample uh, basically gives you a gallery of um, a little more complete apps um, that you might want to start from. And we'll probably dive into that in a future time. I don't have uh, that much time to go into all the samples, but something to take a look at. But for now, I'm going to just highlight the templates that we provide that help jumpstart you um, and talk about kind of the scenario thing. So we call these scenario based uh, teams apps here. It's called can think about it like these are templates that are focused on an outcome. And for example, uh, we've named these like notification bot and really what this does is if you are trying to bring existing data or events into teams into a team's chat like a notification which is a common scenario that we hear a lot of businesses start with then this would be a good template to start with so i can basically get everything set up um, to have a, a bot that will send a chat message um, in a, where, wherever i really want um, i can kind of conf configure that and notify my team that something's going on our team has used this exact template to build um, a notification bot for showing the issues and work items from Azure DevOps that are assigned to us each day. So what we've basically done is we've selected notification bot. We give you three options on how you want to trigger that notification. Um, you can use uh, an HTTP trigger, um, either with a RESTify server or an Azure function, or you can use a timer. So what we did is we chose a timer and we basically have this running in Azure every day and every one of the team kind of gets a ping from this bot that says like, hey, these these work items are assigned to you. And we, we might even filter down like, hey, this is a couple days old, you know, don't forget about it, that kind of stuff. Um, so that's kind of how we've we've played with that. So once you pick how you want to do this, you can choose what programming language you want to do and where you want to put it. That's fine. And I'll just name it something. And then VS Code will just scaffold out the project for us. I'll just keep it in the same window. So once this loads, then we have a pretty simple project here. But what I think is interesting to highlight is just maybe a little bit about what we scaffold and what the layout of this is. And our documentation kind of goes into this a little more detail. But by default, the toolkit has this FX folder. This is where we store a lot of the configuration data for these kind of like all the M365 specific things and also your manifest values. Um, so if we take a look in the templates folder and the app package, we see one thing the toolkit does is the the manifest for your app. So maybe you're familiar with this or not, but all the all teams apps have this JSON file, uh, which is called the app manifest that kind of really defines what your app is and where the endpoints are for the different extensibility points that you're kind of plugging into. And Teams Toolkit takes a kind of a template approach to this. You can see there's things like uh, some mustache brackets here, and we templatize this app manifest for you. And that's con you know controlled by these configs. And the reason we do that, and we'll get into it in a second, is because you can have different environments for this. Uh, it's the terminology we use for saying like, okay, when I'm running locally, it's one value. When I'm running in my uh, test environment, it's another value. When I'm running in production, it's a different value. And that's kind of the way we handle that with the toolkit. If we jump back over to the Teams Toolkit tab, I'll just walk you through some of the features on what the toolkit helps you do. Let me close these things just to remove some noise. Uh, the first thing we have here at the top is the accounts area. So this is where you can sign in with your M365 account. And optionally, if you choose to use uh, the provisioning and deployment things, you can sign in with an Azure subscription and choose your subscription here. And then that will allow you to provision and deploy things in the cloud. But by default, you the, the only thing you really need to do is sign in with M365 identity. And that's where do you want to run this app? Um, that's what this is for. So what, what the toolkit will do is once you sign in with this and then you hit F5 to start debugging, we'll go and automatically reg register this app in Teams Developer Portal. Um, uh, for that tenant and get everything set up. So that way you can have um, a pretty seamless debugging experience without having to jump between different portals and configure everything and, and paste in IDs and all that kind of stuff. So you just sign in with your credentials for where you want this to be. And I've signed in with my M365 developer account. So that way I have kind of a sandboxed tenant to uh, play around in. 
And the, the next thing we have is the environments thing. You don't have to use these features, but it is nice if you're able to. So if I have, because I'm using developer accounts, I have permissions to do whatever I want for these subscriptions. So the local and dev are the two things we give you by default. Local is what you would expect, um, I think, in that um, we run as much locally as possible. Like if it's uh, if you're trying to create some type of web app, then we will run the web server locally for you, uh, just as you would expect. And for the bot piece, um, you know, there's still some remote configurations that are done. I'm in bot framework and uh, Teams developer portal, things like that. So that's not local. Um, those things have to be remote. But any piece that we can run locally, we will. And that's to make it easy for you to develop and debug and test things and iterate. Um, and then as you want, you can create, you know, you can name these environments whatever you want. Just hit the plus and type in a new environment. You might want like something like test or stage. And you can configure which Azure account that goes to. You can add users to it if you need to. Uh, so that way they can also uh, run and debug inside that environment if they have permissions, et cetera. Down here in the development section, uh, just some helpful kind of quick uh, buttons here for how to do things. You can start another Teams app if you need to. Uh, but what I think is interesting to highlight is this add features piece. So I've already created an app here and I chose a notification bot, that template. Um, but let's say now I'm ready to add a UI experience. Um, so what I can do is I can hit add features and we get a list here of some things I can do. You can see here I can add um, some some of the other templates that I didn't choose before. So I can add a SSO enabled tab or just a regular tab without all the SSO features hooked up. Um, I can also connect some uh, data resources here. Like um, I can add a SQL database to this and Key Vault and the toolkit will help scaffold out the required files and connect all the dots for you. So it's a little easier to set up. We also have ways if you want to add an API connection, we have kind of abstractions around that to help you connect to an, an external API and basically create um, some objects that will let you interact with that API. So we kind of scaffold that out for you and a way to easily create GitHub Actions and Azure DevOps workflows for uh, your project. So that way you can plug this into CICD a little easier. Like I said, the manifest file is uh, provided in a templated way. So we have this feature here to make it a little simpler to find that file and open it. And then you can also click preview up here and choose which environment do I want to preview this for. Um, now I haven't run this yet, so these there's these values don't exist. So I, I can't actually preview it. I have to run this first so that way the values exist. But let me jump over to um, another project where I've already hit F5. And the reason I'm skipping over here is because NPM install takes uh, too many minutes to demo live. Um, so if I go to edit manifest file and I choose preview and I choose local, then it's going to open up my local config. You see these values have been replaced now. So I can see what my actual manifest file is. And it's it's available on disk as well. Just a quick way for you to be able to kind of jump back and forth between these environments if you do use them. We also plug in with uh, some previewing adaptive cards. So for the notification bot that I did, we go back up here. And if I look in my bot source, we give you an adaptive card by default. And to make that a little nicer to edit and display, you know, you can go here and you can see kind of a preview of that using the adaptive card extension. So it makes uh, designing your notification, like what's going to be posted in a channel, a little easier. So you can design this, you can manipulate the data here on the, on the left if you want to plug in for these variables. So that's uh, just a nice little development feature. And then the last section of the toolkit that we have is the deployment section. This is um, an optional thing you can adopt. Um, you can use a toolkit without having to use Azure. But if you, if you are using Azure, um, it can be a nice to be able to provision these things for different environments. So we have kind of one-click ways to provision um, all these uh, resources that would be needed. And the way that that is configured is when you scaffold, we give you some, uh, let's see in here, there's some different options you can see here. We give you these bicep files. So we have an opinionated um, hosting solution for each template. So for like the bot, um, we put that in an app service. 
for any web UI front end piece like a tab or something like that, um, you can choose. But I think by default, we give you an app service. So you can also um, choose for bots for like Azure Function, stuff like that. Um, and so we create the bicep files to handle all that. And then when you use the provisioning features, that's that's kind of what controls that. So you could go and um, edit or reauthor those bicep files if you wanted to, or put them in a CI CD pipeline of some kind and use this, the Teams FX CLI tool to do that. Uh, but we give you a way to provision them and then deploy them as well. So the provision will create the resources and then deploy is about getting your actual code to those resources. If you don't want to do that, uh, that's fine. We also have another feature where you can just zip your Teams app package, and that just gives you the local bundle, uh, which is a zip file with your app manifest for whichever environment that you that you want. And then you could upload it to Teams developer portal or some whatever other way that you, maybe you're familiar with or you're, that you're, you find in documentation, and maybe that's simpler for you. And then we also have a way for you to publish directly to your organization from the toolkit. So if you are working, maybe you're working in a small team and it just makes sense to do all this right from VS Code, then you have kind of a end-to-end -end way to do this pretty easy. And I forgot about the, I guess this is actually the last section is the help and feedback area. So we have a link to our documentation and tutorials, and you can also report issues on GitHub. So let me jump back over. And I think I have just one more slide to share. Um, so just to get started, uh, the Teams FX project is what we call the whole thing because uh, Teams FX includes the Teams Toolkit, which is our extensions, our CLI, our SDK, um, also our documentation samples. So we're open source on GitHub, so you can start there. And we have uh, the wiki has a lot of the documentation or links to the Microsoft Docs, where we have a lot of content as well has the samples, has where to get started with download and install. And you can also submit issues there, start a discussion. If you have a problem or you have a question, um, you know, happy to help. So that'd be a great place to get started. I think that's what I got for you today. So thanks for listening. Excellent, John. Thank you, John. Really, really cool stuff. And it is such a beautifully done extension for Visual Studio Code. So awesome job on that. Uh, really, really great stuff. Mm -hmm.